when Latvia achieved their independence in 1919 after seceding from the collapsing Russian Empire and then defeating an invasion from the emerging Soviet Union, they were also left with a bit of a problem. Like all the new Baltic states, they were small countries with big neighbours, and the new Latvian nation's security, indeed its very existence, was going to prove to be at the whims of the dealings of the major regional powers. However, the Latvian military did aspire to maintain itself as an up-to-date, if small, force, and in 1937 was the first export customer for the Gloucester Gladiator, ordering 26. Indeed, in 1939 they would also order 30 Hawker Hurricanes, but circumstance got in the way. But for a young and increasingly nationalistic country, typified by a coup that occurred in 1934 and established a dictatorship, there was a strong desire to increase national defence and prestige by fielding their own indigenous fighter. And that got right to the cusp of occurring in the shape of the VEF I-16. The VEF Company, which translates in English as the State Electrotechnical Factory, was established in 1919. Originally, it was the workshop for the Latvian Post and Telegraph Department, and focused primarily on manufacturing radios and telephones, before branching out into cameras, light bulbs, basically all sorts of things. And one of the engineers who worked for them was one Carlis Ebitis. Ibitis had long had an interest in aircraft and had designed several one-offs for building by small manufacturers and flying clubs in Latvia. In fact, his first design, the I-1, first flew in 1925 and was powered by a three-cylinder engine producing 25 horsepower. In 1935, he convinced the management at VEF to let him build an aircraft for possible sale by the company. This was the I-11, which was a small two-seat sports plane that had a 90 horsepower engine and first flew in 1936. The I-11 was the first of a series of gradually improving and more powerful designs that was intended to ultimately create an indigenous Latvian fighter aircraft. By early 1939, VEF were flying the I-15, an advanced trainer aircraft that was used by the Latvian Air Force and which was powered by a Gypsy 6 engine that produced 200 horsepower. And design work had already begun on the first dedicated fighter aircraft, the aforementioned I-16. This used many of the light aircraft features of the preceding designs, and essentially was in the same mould as light fighters being experimented with in other countries, particularly France and Italy. The I-16 was a single-seat low-wing monoplane with fixed undercarriage. Construction was of a wooden framework with plywood skinning, and the control surfaces were fabric-covered. Armament, which doesn't appear to have been fitted, was composed of two machine guns mounted in the nose cowling in front of the pilot and shooting through the propeller arc, with allowance being made for additional weapons to be emplaced under the wings. Depending on the source, this would have been either two more machine guns or possibly two 20mm cannon. The I-16 was powered by a Czechoslovakian-made Walter Segita ISR, an air-cooled V-12 that produced 535 horsepower. By 1939, that was about half the horsepower of most new fighters coming into service, but the I-16 weighed only 1,100 kilograms empty, less than half that of a hurricane. First flight took place in the spring of 1940, and proved the aircraft to have good handling. Probably understandable given its sport plane roots, but an issue with the fuel feed caused the engine to cut out after 20 minutes, and the pilot had to make an emergency landing. Fortunately, without damage to either himself or the aircraft. Work was undertaken to solve the fuel issue, and more test flights conducted. The aircraft does seem to have had a reasonable performance, with a listed top speed of 300 miles per hour, though admittedly that is without military equipment. But the timing for the I-16 was poor, probably indicated by the markings on the aircraft that are on display in pretty much all of the photographs used in this video. Oh, and I'll put this in now, but uh, in case there is an issue, if the markings have been blurred out, it is because YouTube has objected and I've had to change things. In June 1940, the Soviet Union invaded, pretty much sweeping aside resistance, and took control of Latvia. The Soviets were interested in the I-Series, and sent most of them to their own testing centres for evaluation. Many of the design team and test pilots were also dispatched, sent to labour camps and gulags, many never to be seen again. Ibitis and the I-16, however, remained, as the fuel feed issues still needed to be worked out properly. 
were continued until the German invasion of the Soviet Union a year later, which included the newly subjugated Baltic states. The I-16 was still at the VEF plot, and the Germans, also interested in examining new military technology, had VEF finished the modifications and conducted their own tests with the aircraft, hence the markings on display. The I-16 was then sent to a pilot training school in Poland, where it vanished from history. It is hard to imagine that an aircraft as light and minimally powered as the I-16 being of any use as a frontline aircraft in 1939-1940. But as said, serious consideration was given by most of the major powers at the time to the building of lightweight fighters in this vein, and the I-16 seems to have been a solid and competent example of this concept. And it was also intended to be another stepping stone, because Ibitis was already planning a fully modern fighter to replace it, the I-19, even as the I-16 was being developed. And considering the speed that he was putting out improving aircraft in, from the I-11 with 90 horsepower in 1936 to the I-16 with 535 horsepower in 1940, I wouldn't have bet against him. Because as a designer, he would prove to be no slouch. After the war, Ibitis managed to escape to Canada, where he got a job with Canadair, where he was a key designer on the CL-84 project, one of the pioneering tilt-wing aircraft. But in terms of his what-if fighter aircraft, this is all speculation, and the I-16 was to remain the only fighter ever built by Latvia. <laughs> 